the power of HammerKit is best demonstrated in building data-driven web services. In the following example, we'll walk you through the steps of building a feedback form. First, you need to consider what kind of information you want to collect. Open the data tool and click on the plus sign to create a new data class. This is the table to which your data input will be stored. In the appearing settings box, type a name for the data class. Open it by double-clicking. Next, add the fields for the information you have decided to collect. In HammerKit, we call these attributes. Click on the plus sign next to the ID field and a new attribute appears asking you to name it. Type in the name for the first piece of information you want to store. In this example, let's add two attributes, message and name. Once done with the data class, move on to the component editor to create the front end of the form. Create three content components and name them according to their task. Let's call the first one form. This is where you get the data input from. Call the second thank you. It is the page you get once the data is filled in. The last is called listing. It is the page that shows the feedback messages. Next, let's start working on the actual form component with the form tools of the element container. Begin by dragging a form element on the canvas. In the settings box, define what is the target of the form. That is, where do we navigate after the form is filled? In this case, you want to end up in the thank you page. To create content inside the form element, you will need to add text and fields for inputting the data. Let's drag a plain text element and type in the inquiry for the user's name. Then add a text input element to create the input capturing structure. Note that the name has to match exactly with the attribute name given on the data class in the data manager tool. In this case, it is name. Add line breaks between elements. Then repeat the same for the message part. Here you should use the text area element instead of the text input. It is more suitable for long text and allows users to stretch the text box. The final step here is to add a submit button. In the settings box, define the type as submit. What you want the button to read is indicated on the value field. In this case, let's have the word send. Then save. For the thank you page showing after the form has been filled, you can add a text element and write, thank you for your feedback. For the text to be saved in the database, you need to add functionality, in this case an object interface element which can be found in the data handling section. When the settings box is open, select class feedback, method add static, and on attribute post variables. Then click OK. Now the form is ready to the point where data input is being saved to the database. Remember to save. Next, we want to create a functionality where the data input will be listed and shown on a page. To create the list viewing component, you need to add a couple of functionalities. Let's start with the list initializer element that can be found in the control elements section. This element initiates the search and listing of data from a selected object class. In this case, data will be listed from the data class called feedback that was created before. You need to define a variable where the results of the data search will be stored. A recommendable variable type is private variable that works in most cases. Give the variable an appropriate name, for example, feedback list. Then define sorting rules, in this case, sort by creation time and reversed order. Next, you need to add the list iterator element to create the actual iteration of data. First, select the list in question, in this case the one you just defined, private variables and feedback list. At this point, you don't need to pay attention to set key in since it is only needed in special cases. Set value in is a mechanism that individualizes each row on the list for further usage. 
create a variable and select again private variable and name it as feedback object. Make sure that you have value as object instead of object ID checked to list all information of a single row of data. The loop control is not mandatory but it allows the definition of the number of the first row and the amount of rows to be iterated. Here we select the max amount of targets shown as 10. Press OK. As the last step, you need to be able to print the data. For this, let's use the print element. Position it inside the list iterator element. The data is now collected from the private variable called feedback object. Add the desired fields to be shown by adding their names after the variable. For example, by adding name after the variable, all the text in the name column will be shown. Repeat the previous, but this time define the variable as feedback object dot message. Add a couple of text elements with the texts from and message to give a title to the data shown. Add some line breaks to create structure. Remember to save. You can then test a form by navigating to Form tab and previewing it. Type in a test message and press Send. The Thank You page appears. To see the messages listed, click on the List in Components preview. You can also navigate back to the HammerKids database and see how your message simply appears there with the data on its designated fields. Here it is easy to read and manage. Here's a quick example of a functioning form on a HammerKit made template. For more tips and tricks on how to use HammerKit, go to support.hammerkit.com.